I'm going to show you how to make a data table in Microsoft Excel uh, for these rates of reaction experiments. Um, so I've opened up uh, Microsoft Excel, not Google Sheets. And uh, first of all, I'm going to um, just zoom in so it makes it a little bit easier to see. So I click on View, and I'm going to zoom to 200. That makes the cells bigger, so it's easier for me to see everything. Um, in my first cell uh, um, on the left here, I'm going to put the name of the independent variable. In this case, it's the concentration of hydrochloric acid. Um, and then I'm going to put the units, which is molar. But I'm also going to put the uncertainty. Um, the uncertainty in this case is um, 0.01. And I use. I need to put in the um, plus and minus symbol. Um, on an Apple Mac, it's the option, the shift, and then the plus key give me that um, plus minus symbol. Um, now you can see here that it's running over to the next cell. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually highlight two cells, cells A1 and A2, and I'm going to click Merge and Center. Um, what that does is it merges these two cells together. I still can't read the text properly, so I'm going to click on Wrap Text. Um, still can't quite see, see it properly, so I'm going to make this cell a bit bigger so that I can see all my text how I want to. I'm going to put in the values now, the different concentrations of the hydrochloric acid. Uh, sorry, I've put these in wrong. I'm going to just do that again. Okay, now you can see it's giving these to just one decimal place, but I can see from my uncertainty here that I want to be giving these to two decimal places because that's the uncertainty that the hydrochloric acid concentrations have been made to. So I'm going to use the icon here to increase the number of decimal places here. I can make more or fewer I want each of these to be to two decimal places. Um, now along the top here, I'm going to put in the name of the dependent variable. In this case, it's the rate of uh, pressure change. Um, and this is going to be given to plus or minus one pascal per second. Um, in Excel, you can't use superscript, so I'm going to use the dash here rather than an s to the power of minus one. And then I'm going to put in the number of trials. In this case, I've just used an example of four, uh, but you'll need to decide how many trials you're going to do. We're also going to have the mean value, and we're going to have the half range. Now, all of these fall under the title of rate of pressure change. So I'm going to highlight all the cells above here, merge and center. I'm also just going to highlight all of the columns here, um, and I'm going to centralize those to make it uh, easy to read. So I'm just going to quickly check over. Yep, my data table's all ready. So I'm now ready to start entering my data. Um, now I've got some data here already, some sample data, so I'm just going to paste that in. Um, and I've also noticed I'm just going to uh, so over here, I can choose borders. I want to choose all borders. Just makes it a bit easier to read with the lines between them. Now, in order to get the mean for each of these, um, I just press equals and then AV, and I can see it's already coming up with average. So Microsoft Excel uses the, the command average in order to calculate the mean. I highlight the cells I want to calculate the average of. I press enter, and it's giving me the average there. Um, it's given me a little warning, formula emits adjacent cells, it's B3. It's given me that warning because it's thinking, do I want to calculate the mean for this column A, which I don't, so I'm going to ignore the error. Now, in, rather than having to make that formula in each of these cells, this little green box on the corner here, I can just click on there, drag this down, um, and it... Uh, um, it now calculates the mean for all of them. Um, it's 
No, I don't want to do that. Okay, it's giving me this warning again. I want to ignore error for all of them. Now again, it's giving some to zero decimal places, some to one, some to two decimal places. So I'm just going to highlight those and reduce them. The, the raw data were given from Pasco Capstone to zero decimal places. So the process data, such as the means, is also given to zero decimal places. Now we're going to calculate the half range. If we had more trials, we could calculate the standard deviation. Uh, but with only four trials, it's better to calculate the half range. So um, what I can do, I don't think there's a range. No. So what I have to do is I need to work out what the maximum value is here. So I'm going to do max, open brackets, and then highlight these four columns. Don't highlight the column with the mean in it and then close brackets, minus min, again I'll highlight my data, close brackets, and then I'm going to close brackets again, so this is all one value here, the max minus the min, so that's just giving me the range, because it's the maximum value minus the minimum value, and then I divide that by 2, and it gives me that, and I'm just going to check this, because I can see the maximum value is 24, the minimum value is 21, that's a difference of 3, so the range is 3, divided by 2 is 1.5. I'm going to drag that down, so it's going to do it for um, all of my data. Again, it's giving me this warning. Um, it's saying, well, you've not done it for these cells over here, but that's what I want, so I'm just going to ignore the error. Again, these values um, I want to give to the same number of decimal places as the rest of my data, so I'm going to reduce that like that. Okay, so I've now got my data table ready to make my graph in. Um, so we're going to be using a line graph in this case. Um, in order to get that, I need to highlight the values of my um, independent variable. Then I tell you, well, what, one thing that a lot of people do is they think, well, in order to make my graph, I've got to copy the values of my independent variable. I've got to copy the mean values and make a separate table. You don't have to do that. You just highlight the values of your independent variable. On an Apple computer, you press the command key, and then you highlight your mean values. Okay, so what Excel is going to do is going to realize, well, these are the values of one variable, and they correspond to these values of the other variable. Um, on insert, I'm going to click um, a graph. I want a scatter graph, and I just want a basic scatter graph like this. Okay, so you can see now it's given me my graph. I'm going to move this down here. Um, I also want to add um, error bars onto this because each of these is a mean value um, and it's calculated from uh, four values. So the error bars, I want to represent the half range. Now, this is something that you have to do in Excel. You can't, in uh, Google Sheets, um, you can either select all the error bars to be the same length, but you can't have um, error bars at different lengths like we're about to do now. So um, I make sure that I click on chart design at the top here and then so I've, I've clicked on the, gr the chart, I click chart design and then add chart element. Now I want error bars and then don't click on any of these, I want more error bar options. Um, now, on the vertical error bars here, so make sure you've selected the, the little graph here. Under vertical error bar, I come down to custom, and I want to specify the value. It means that for every, um, um, for every point, I want to specify the length of the error bar. Now, the error bars have a positive error value, so this is how long is the error bar above the data point, and a negative error value. That's how long is the error bar below. Now, these I want to be the same as each other. So for the positive error values, I highlight the five values for my um, half range, and then I press Enter. Oh, so I need to do that also for the negative error, error bars. I highlight that and press Enter. Um, so can you see I've got the same values in both? Click on OK, and then that's put them onto the, uh, the chart. 
It's also given me these horizontal arrow bars, which I do not want. So I'm going to click on those and I press uh, delete. Now, what I can do is I can look here and see, okay, how long are my arrow bars? Looking at the graph, I can see this point here is the longest arrow bar. If I look at my data, yeah, it's got a, um, a half range of four. That makes sense. This is a half range of two, and I can see that it's got a small error bar here. So the error bars are looking good. Okay, another thing I want to do is I want to add a line of best fit. Now, this depends on the chart you're going to make. In, if Because I've got a really clear straight line here, I can add a line of um, best fit using Excel. If you've got a, a curve that forms like an optimum, like a hill shape like this, what I suggest is that you copy your... Um, graph into your assignment into Google Docs there you can add a drawing and you can draw the line of best fit um, by joining the points using a curve in the draw function um, in Google Sheets um, but because I've got a nice straight line I'm going to use the uh, function in Excel I want a trend line and I want it to be linear okay and that's given me a nice linear straight line now um, I also need to add um, axis titles. Um, so again, add chart element, axis titles, primary vertical. So this is the mean um, rate of pressure change. And this is in pascals per second. And I also want to add um, the um, horizontal axis title, and this is concentration, oh, concentration of HCl, um, and that's in molarity. Um, now, what I would suggest is don't include a chart title, so delete that. But when you you can now, so this chart is ready to be copied into your assignment um, and so is the data table. Um, I would suggest you put a caption um, next to each of these. For example, for the chart, you could write figure one, line graph showing the mean rate of pressure change at four, five different concentrations of hydrochloric acid. Okay, and that's how you do, do your data table and your graph for rates of reaction experiments.